in this Into the Outdoors at Home edition. So the cane pole is one of the most simple rods out there. There's no reel and it's just four simple parts. We have the pole, we have six pound mono, a little bobber, and a small hook. And finally, to make them bite, we'll need to bait that hook with bait. Make sure you have a bobber and a hook that are appropriate size for the fish you're catching. The reason we're using a little bobber and a little hook is because we're catching little fish. And this bobber is gonna be super sensitive and pick up any bites. And this little hook is gonna be able to fit in their mouths and it's gonna be perfect for catching all sorts of little bluegill. Bobbers are attached onto your fishing line. The reason for a bobber is to suspend your bait at the depth where the fish are at, and so you can easily see when they're biting your bait. If you see your bobber moving in the water, it's a signal that a fish might be starting to nibble on your bait. If your bobber goes completely under the water, tug on the line because a fish might be on the hook. Always let an adult know when you're going to be fishing, and it's always a good idea to have an adult nearby when you're by water. When fishing from open docks or piers, anglers should always wear their life jackets. In this case, our group is fishing from a pier with safety rails, so life jackets aren't necessarily required, but they're always still a good idea. The bluegill is a species of freshwater fish, sometimes referred to as a sunfish. It is native to North America and usually lives in rivers, lakes, and ponds. While their color can vary from population to population, they typically have a very distinctive coloring, with deep blue and purple on the face, dark olive colored bands down the side, and the fiery orange to yellow belly. So you gotta be careful, cause on top here, you see there's some yeah. spines, and then also bottom near the dorsal fin here. So grab him right on the belly, do you see where it's orange there? Yep, okay. Are you thinking about going on a fishing trip, like my friends and me? Well then you have to learn what kinds of tools you need to bring in your tackle box. Let's see what I brought to help everyone become successful anglers. All right everyone, we have a very simple tackle box today. The first thing we have, we have size six, 10, and eight hooks. We have short shank, which are these little ones, and the straight part of the hook. And then we have long shanks of those sizes too. And you can see how that straight part is a lot longer, right? The shank on a hook is the straight portion of metal before it starts to curve. Like I said, hooks come with either short or long shanks. Short shank hooks are good when you're using smaller bait like redworms, crickets, or leeches. Long shank hooks are good when you're using larger bait like night crawlers and minnows. Do you want to go try some other spot? There's a bunch of bluegill here, but I think we could go catch some other fish. Let's go. Sure. All right. Changing places, baits, and methods can often help you catch more, different, or bigger fish. All right, Ashton, so do you know why we chose this spot? No. All right, well, you can see there's a log in the water, and that's going to give shade and structure for the fish to hide in. There's a lot of weeds, and that's good cover as well. All right, so we're gonna be using crickets. What do you think those are gonna catch? Um, maybe in a bass. Using crickets as bait, you can catch all kinds of fish species. Some of the most common ones that will happily bite in a cricket are trout, crappie, yellow perch, and certain kinds of catfish. Using crickets during the summer months will almost ensure you'll catch a fish, as crickets are a natural food source for many fish during these warmer months. Ashton, have you ever fished with crickets? Do you know how to hook them? Um, no. You see these legs right here? Mm-hmm. You just gotta hook it right behind those legs, a little bit up, because there's a soft spot there, all right? So I have my cricket, so I'm just gonna try to throw it far out. Just walk down the shoreline and keep throwing it out there. Hey Ben, we're out of crickets. 
Really? Huh, you wanna try leeches and a bottom rig? Yeah. All right, maybe that'll get us a bass. Let's go meet the other guys. Hey guys, I'm gonna show you how to unhook a fish, how to hold a fish, and how to put a fish back in the water. First, how you unhook a fish is just kind of lean it towards. And if that doesn't really work, take the end of it, push it out, push it, and it's out. Lucy took that hook out like a pro. Well, let's take a closer look at how to properly remove it from a bluegill in case Lucy was too fast for you to keep up with. After catching a bluegill, grab the hook, turn it down, and push the pointed end of the hook away from the fish's mouth. Then, pull it out when it's free. This is how you hold a bluegill. You don't want its pointy scales. If they're up like that, you don't, you don't want them to poke you. So you have to hold it down. That's exactly right, Lucy. You want to make sure you gently grasp it on the top and bottom, making sure you do a petting motion from its mouth downward in order to avoid grabbing its sharp spines. I'm going to show you how to put it back in the water. So find a like, small spot and then put your arm through a little bit and release that. And it's back in the water safely. When you release a fish, gently set them back in the water. Never throw a fish back or toss them through the air into the water. This could harm the fish. Besides releasing fish responsibly, you need to be a responsible angler about rules and regulations. So please check with your local fish agency about fishing seasons for different species, size, and catch limits, and how to get a fishing license. Those fishing license fees help pay for fishing conservation programs that help all anglers and our aquatic resources. This can be done online at the DNR's website 